Now for all of you who don't fancy following on with a long winded bloaty video, this is the guts of it. Batteries, diode, voltage in on the regulator, ground, <coughs> voltage out on the regulator, goggle centre pin, goggle barrel, back to the LED board negative which goes back to the battery negative. And then you've got um, positive battery, unregulated, which goes to the LED board. And then the fans just bridged off the LED board, plus or minus. So, if you don't want to watch a really long-winded explanation of how I got there, then that's how you do it. Give me a quick mod. Um, I've just got a pair of uh, Fat Shot HD Freeze, and um, to my astonishment, there's absolutely no reverse polarity protection on a pair of 400 pound goggles. Not, not in the battery case, not in the goggles apparently. I don't know if there is, they can tell me, but so far, no one's told me there is. And I, <clears throat> with my electric fag cigarette, for those American viewers, um, I've often put these in the wrong way around. And my electric fag, my electric cigarette, has reverse polarity protection, and it only cost about 20 quid. Whereas these, it would be very easy to put the batteries in the wrong way. In fact, it would be easier because of the way the thing goes with the top and uh, screw the battery. Now, some screw the goggles. Now, somebody said to me on the RC groups, oh, don't worry, just um, put the batteries in whatever way, press the power button, and if it, if it doesn't light up, you know they're in the wrong way, which was a stupid suggestion because it basically blew the chip on the board which is a, an op-amp and um, means that the battery indicator won't work. The, the, they've still powered the goggles but the battery indicator will not work and that is why we've got this little set up here. I was trying to figure out what chip it is, it's an op-amp and that's what I've done and then bought some of these little uh, LM324 op-amps to go back on there. So that was a rather helpful suggestion I got there, so don't do that. So then I thought, well, I know, I'll get the Fat Shark battery shield. The Fat Shark battery shield, right? About three, four quid. It's, uh, I don't know, 100. It's this thing here, right? Which is three or four quid. It's supposed to be reverse polarity and um, <clears throat> current limiting. Well, that's great, uh, except it doesn't reverse polarity until the load gets low enough. Um, which, I, which doesn't inspire a lot of faith in me and speaking to someone who knows about electronics said the diode's way out of spec and uh, I think it's a waste of time so I watched um, and plus it won't fit in the case if I put the diode on just as it is i.e. a la fat shark then the usable voltage goes from 8.4 to about 7.8 and the goggles start screaming and cutting out at 7 so that's a non-starter, that's a non-starter. Um, so hopefully this is going to be a quick video showing you how to put a diode in and a step up regulator so you get reverse polarity protection for your expensive fat shark goggles without losing all the voltage in a diode. The only downside is these will keep going at 9 volts until they're dead. The only way you'll know is if you keep pressing the button to see how much is left in them and I think you can go down to 1 and still be safe. And by all accounts, you should get more battery life out of these doing it this way. But you run the risk of over-discharging the battery. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So this battery case is just literally a battery case. And down one side of it, I think it's, it's that side, there's a board. I have just showed you. To get this open, there's, a, there's little clips. It's just plastic clips. There's one, two, three, four. I think there might be one here and one here. And then <coughs> there's screws which are clipped into the top plastic. So you've got to go around it with something like this, get two or three of them, wedge them in, carefully go around it and pop them. A bit fiddly doing this, but once you've got one corner, just keep going around, keep going around. There's one there, one there, one there, one there, and then two screws that are popped into the plastic. So the screws are in the white bit, and the head of the screw just pops over the top, I'll show you in a minute. So that's the easiest way one in the side there, one in the side there, leave one in and go around the rest of them. Okay, and we're in and we haven't broken any tabs, so just go careful. I've had this off two or three times, so if you go careful, you'll be all right. There's the board. Very simple affair. That's the board. There's just a button and four LEDs <coughs> and the op-amp. <coughs> so it takes power off here, feeds it to the board, and um, my battery's running low. And then, it, and then it sparks it off to here and to here. So I'm just going to plug this in the uh, battery. I'm going to take this board out. This board just slides out. 
uh, and then I'm going to rewire it for you. Okay, so I'm just mocking it up. Palolo is going to go in there. The diode is going to come off the hot rail through the diode, voltage in on the Palolo. So the Palolo is voltage protected. Okay, so there's the thing drying with plastic dip on it. Palolo step up 9 volt regulator diode. So main power comes in from the battery to the anode of the diode. That's not black, it's um, the leg of the diode. It goes up to the red in to the regulator and then back out of the regulator to the what we'll do to the middle of the pin of that. The ground is going to tag onto the ground there and then another ground will be tagged off of there for the board and the fan which won't be protected. Loose down there, diodes in there. Uh, Negative, positive wired up, so you've got to get another negative out, and then those two will go to our connector. And then I'm going to repair this board. This board was the one that was fried by the helpful advice from my RC Groups guy. Um, so this was my little test. That's an LM324, which is a quad op amp. Take these off. I just wanted to make sure it was an op amp, so I put no op amp on it, and there you go. Um, so I'm going to take these off. Clean it up, put a new chip on there. I'm gonna... oh, yeah, I figured I might as well do it properly, put it on a little board there. So I shoot out the flux. What I normally do is get a cocktail stick, loads of them, get a flux, smother it. And I normally just dip the flux, the, the uh, the uh, braiding a bit of flux. We like a bit of flux. And I'll just uh, go over it slowly but not too slowly. Yeah, asbestos fingers really. That should be good enough. It's uh, blooming there on the camera, it's just because the light looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to pause it. People say you can never have too much flux, they're absolutely right. I'm just going to say arse on this video because apparently someone got banned from uh, YouTube for saying it, so uh, <coughs> arse. Um, right, so what we do now is we. I'm a bit of a rebel when I move the thing around. So, USB microscope comes in handy for this sort of thing, as does a steady hand, which you'll see I don't have. It always gets worse just as it goes right to the critical time. Just tag one there. I think we tag one there. Actually, did we? I don't think we did. Let's try it again. It's just, it's just where it all goes. Ass, basically. Goes like a load of ass here. Yeah, that's tagged it. Bit of an art form. Don't get disheartened. You can always undo it and go again. Um, I never had any training in this. There's the other one. So now it's down, I'm just going to have a quick look, make sure I'm happy with it. I should really use a microscope, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to clean the tip up, get a little bit of uh, flux on the base. This is probably a bit too big, this blade, or whatever it's called. I just. do that. Sometimes they'll pick up, and sometimes they won't. That doesn't look too bad. And the key here is the flux. You can do it without flux, but you'll be there all day. And you probably will get one or two bridges. Just gonna do that that section again one time. That 
it's done. I good idea to put safety goggles on, so I've had chips blow up, and I do go with a bang, but 8.4 volts, all the lights. Knock it down to, I don't know, 7, 6, 6.9, no lights, 7.4, should get something, get yeah, two lights. So that board's now working, that can go back in. So it's zoomed up a bit, so there it is, battery's in. And there's my handiwork. So the little pull olives down there, the little diodes in there underneath. And how it's working is oh, I'll just show you that the battery tester still works. Like that. So how it's working is <coughs> the batteries, so the positive here feeds the diode the anode of the diode. The cathode of the diode then goes to the voltage in of the regulator. The voltage out of the regulator doesn't touch this board. It goes all the way out to the centre pin of that. Not the fan, just that. Because what will happen is if it's reverse polarised the fan will just spin the other way, it's not a big deal. But if that's reverse polarised it's good by goggles, 400 quid. So that's, uh, that's the regulated side. So the, the battery monitor doesn't get involved with that. The battery monitor is just still literally off positive and negative because I want to know what's in these batteries. Because I've got no warning now from the goggles because they'll be constantly 9 volts until these batteries are dead. So that's the goggle side and the battery monitor side and then the fan side is the same as the monitor side. So what I did was I took um, ground to the regulator from here, one wire, then off of here I bridged ground to the ground on the, the board here and then from that ground you got that ground and this ground and then from the positive of the board here it's just linked to this this positive here show you the voltages quickly so I don't even know if it's going to pick this up but this is the end of that nine point one two because it's coming off the regulator for that it is 8.27 because it's coming off the battery and for that it's 8.27 as well so it's showing that so let's just flick it round and not press the button that's the wrong way round um, so what I should get is I should get a negative voltage here let's do that so that would be there's a negative there that would be good by goggles on the goggles getting nothing. We're getting no voltage at all and the reason for that is the diode. So the diode is working, the board hasn't blown up and the goggles are protected. So that is a mod that I would consider be worth doing if you've got an expensive pair of goggles and they're asking you to use these batteries because it is so easy put these in the wrong way around, that's why I put tape on them, but even better than that, the diode. I don't intend on relying on it, so we just make sure we haven't blown anything. So I've got it back together now, the right way around, we just check our battery tester works, and it does, and we check that we've got voltage on the, I'll find the pin, it's a bit of an ass. so uh, 9.21, so nothing's blown, so that, but take your goggles. Good luck all and I'll see you soon. Cheers. Hope that helps.